Mountains of Hope and Freedom. Hello, I'm Gordon Wilson, a Pyrenees fanatic and mountain trekker, along with my partner, Angharad Thomas. I wrote the poems that you are about to hear. I wrote them to capture the variety and flavour of our meetings and greetings with those we have met among the Pyrenees mountains. Our encounters have been on the trail itself and in Jeet d'Etat, mountain refuges and village inns. The poems are read by our six grandchildren. Anarin reads the chorus, while Isaac, Willem, Rose, Brimmore and Ailey each read a poem. And Harrod plays a few bars of a French folk song at the end of each poem. An encounter with the SAS. Snow, rocks and a knife-edged coal teased our way. With mountains in our face throughout the day, it was a scary trek to Lara Bay. A refuge shared with ten mature Englishmen, ex-SAS, now retired and 70-plus, offers a class that accents said it all. What does Veron say about tomorrow, one asked at dinner. French guide book to hand, tough but easy in the today, a barren land. As they drank with ease carafes of red wine, the Pyrenees, Atlantic to the Med, 500 mountain miles, they simply said. Just like us, we harmonised, except they preferred their tents to stuffy dormitories. One also mentioned he mixed with royalty. Then arrived the time to clear the table. Leave it to us, they chorused to a man. Thirty seconds later, the table was bare. Cutlery and dishes stacked, surface wiped. We were so impressed as they strode outside to put up tents as light began to fade. By a refuge and a stream in mountain shade, they have style our reluctant accolade. And we thought no more of the lives beyond the wild mountain frontier, crest of peaks, the wild hanging lakes, the valleys of toil, the wild Pyrenees consuming us all. The late arrival, the road, a narrow road, but still a road, of tarmac departed the jeep de tap, signalling at the, the end of the high mountains, just four days to the med and its flesh pots. Dinner was a quiet affair, low key, a bond between trekkers, the end not far. French, British, Belgian, Dutch, I now recall. The guardian smiled, she was a little drunk. When the door swung open and there in framed, a Frenchman stood in motorbike leather, tall and smiling with helmet in gloved hand. He demanded dinner and a place to sleep. The guardian smiled at the end of her tether. Not one of us, he at the table end, reached for my wine and swigged two full glasses. I tried polite conversation, but he wanted to argue, stating that in France, everyone is French, whatever their birth, unlike Anglo-Saxons or Spanish, where English or Scottish or Welsh or Irish, or Catalan or Basque or someone else. A pause, and then he opined imperiously, Anglo-Saxon multiculturalism is responsible for world terrorism. I smiled and asked politely in best French if he thought that North Africans felt French. When rioting through France, excluded were they from society. He banged the table. My fellow trekkers fell silent and troubled, where I stayed smiling because of my French, and the guardian poured us all a drink of fire water. I know not its name. So we both shook hands and called off the game. And we thought no more of the lives beyond the wild mountain frontier, crest of peaks, the wild hanging lakes, the valleys of toil, the wild Pyrenees consuming us all. With a nod to a midsummer's night dream. I know an estive where wild flowers grow, mosaics of colour softened by snow, and door is August but winter stayed late, the mountain quarries still covered in snow. The pass was narrow, its ridge jagged rock, on the far side a path steep and winding, bore two families talking while toiling. We met them halfway and chatted away, excited to bits, had never met Brits. 
Then fathers and sons set off on the ridge, an airy scramble to excite them more. The mothers descended, our chat intense, language presenting no impediment. Of everyday lives here and there, until they found a place near a glacial lake, a good spot for a barbecue, they said. We hugged, we exchanged emails, we then kissed, promised photos of home and family. The flame of human friendship fled briefly. Our meeting was fleeting, never again, but ever lingers the intensity of Andorra in the warmth of the flame, where Estive's flower forever untamed. And we thought no more of the lives beyond the wild mountain frontier, crest of peaks, the wild hanging lakes, the valleys of toil, the wild Pyrenees consuming us all. Mountains of hope and freedom. In the refuge by the lake that reflects and frames the noble peak de Midi de Ossu. And Harold asked, Où habitez vous en France? It's a common opening gambit. Nantes, replied one of the three mature women, monosyllabic sitting opposite. Hang Harold tried to be friendly, but she dug a hole, declaring, Comme Liverpool. The woman looked aghast, so Hang Harold dug deeper. Les sucre à cotton. She paused. She looked straight at me. What's the French for slaves? I didn't know, but I do now. The woman looked away, not wanting to talk anyway. But it was never thus in Candanchu, a Spanish frontier village, where two Frenchmen of similar age told us that Plato was their only book, and agreed what refugees of bygone years said in tears. The Pyrenees symbolises hope and freedom. Nine days later, a scenic spot, Hayas is its name, two young Belgians set up camp on the village green and laughed and kissed. They dined with us outside the village inn, not much older than teenage boy and girl, their exuberance lit by starry sky, the planets and Milky Way included. We met just three more times along the trail, shared experience of transcending borders, no mention of Plato, no platitudes, but a smile and song of innocence, of wonder for all things Pyrenean. They were the future of hope and freedom, so what happened to them, we know not what. And we thought no more of the lives beyond the wild mountain frontier, crest of peaks, the wild hanging lakes, the valleys of toil, the wild Pyrenees consuming us all. A love story. We had met one person during nine hours trekking in thunder, lightning, hail, and rain. As we stepped through the wooden refuge door, we were dreaming of bed. We were dreaming of dinner. We were dreaming of dry clothes but discovered instead a crowded room of bedlam seeking shelter from the storm. Hikers massed a cacophonic chorus. We removed our boots, hung our waterproofs, and Herod went to the toilet to cry, it being the quietest spot in town. Fifteen minutes later, the bedlam switched off as the hikers left for their four-by-fours at the dirt roadhead to carry them down. Those of us left started gently to bond at dinner that night, but being tired from a day in the rain, sweet bedtime soon came. We continued to bond each night of each day, till six days later, the end of the trail, we were twelve and a formidable team. We dined the last night in Banyuls sur Mer, where a plaque fates the feet of mountain feet. You're not like we expected Brits to be. You're not like we expected French to be. We talked and laughed about life and living. Is it still foggy in London? one asked. While the moon arose waxing, not waning, above the lapping med on cloudless night, I must confess I was a little tight and rare in men felt an emotion. But happy be the ending to this tale, for we have made two close friends for life, with time shared in the Lake District at New Year, in Yorkshire in spring, in southwest France, and, of course, the wild Pyrenees in summer, year upon year, a celebration of what we hold so preciously in common. Through friendship we now know of lives beyond the wild mountain frontier, crest of peaks, the wild hanging lakes, the valleys of toil, the wild Pyrenees once consumed us all. <laughs>